This talk is an overview of the diagnosis of Autism Spectrum Disorder, also known as Autism or ASD. In this talk, I'll review the ASD diagnosis in the DSM-5 with mnemonics and visuals. The two major symptom clusters in ASD are social impairment and restricted behavior. There are three social impairment symptoms. Reciprocity refers to difficulties processing and responding to complex social cues. For example, the patient may have difficulties in knowing when and how to join a conversation or knowing what and what not to say. Rhetoric refers to absent, reduced, or atypical use of nonverbal communication. For example, the patient may have reduced or unusual eye contact, gestures, facial expressions, body orientation, or speech intonation. Relationships refers to absent, reduced, or atypical social interest. For example, the patient may have difficulty making and maintaining friendships, may outwardly reject others, or be overly passive or disruptive in approaching others. There are four restricted behavior symptoms. Restricted refers to highly restricted or fixated interests. For example, this may be someone who is highly preoccupied with a specific interest such as airplanes or trains to the extent that it interferes with learning other topics or is clearly excessive. Repetitive refers to repetitive motor actions, use of objects, speech, or other repetitive behaviors. This often involves behaviors referred to as stimming, which refers to behaviors used to self-stimulate. For example, this may include hand flapping, finger flicking, spinning coins, lining up toys, or repeating words. Rigid refers to excessive adherence to routines or resistance to change. For example, this may involve insistence on strict adherence to rules in a board game, or distress at apparently small changes, such as taking a different route to school or work. Reactive refers to extreme responses to sensory stimuli, either extremely hyperreactive or extremely hyporeactive. For example, this may involve extreme distress when exposed to specific sounds or textures, excessive smelling or touching of objects, fascination with lights or spinning objects, or even apparent indifference to pain or temperature. You can see that I've chosen R words for each of these symptoms to hopefully make them easier to remember. To meet criteria for the diagnosis of ASD, a patient must have all three of the social symptoms and at least two of the restricted symptoms associated with functional impairment. To remember this, you can visualize the A in autism, where the three points in the triangle at the top represent the social symptoms and the two points on the legs at the bottom represent the restricted symptoms. These are the major details to remember about the ASD diagnosis, but there are two last things to keep in mind. First is that symptom onset must be during early development. The second is that you should be careful to distinguish ASD from intellectual disability, which, depending on the severity of the intellectual disability, can be very similar to ASD. I'd like to conclude by discussing disease severity. There are three formal severity levels based on the patient's required level of external support, Let's go over examples of symptoms you might see in each of these severity categories. In the lowest severity level, requiring support, the social symptoms you may see are that the patient may have difficulty initiating social interactions or have odd responses to social situations. The patient may speak in full sentences, but use odd, atypical gestures or body language in their nonverbal communication. The restricted symptoms you may see are restricted or repetitive behaviors only in a few contexts, and they may be subtle. You may see mild difficulty in switching activities or switching focus between tasks. In the substantial support severity level, the social symptoms are, of course, a bit more severe. There may be only limited initiation of social interactions and reduced social responses. Nonverbal communication may be very odd, and the patient may only speak in simple sentences. At this severity level, the restricted and repetitive behaviors may be seen in multiple contexts and obvious even to casual observers and there may be notable distress when having to switch between activities. Finally, in the very substantial support severity level, the social symptoms may involve rarely, if ever, initiating interactions and having minimal or no social responses. The patient may have few intelligible words and completely absent use of nonverbal communication. They may only approach caregivers in order to have basic needs met, such as feeding or toileting. The restricted and repetitive behaviors are likely present in all contexts and severely impairing, and there is likely severe distress and resistance when switching between activities. That's the end of this talk. I hope the simplification makes it easy to remember ASD. Thank you.